In this video, I'm going to show you how I made the ghost trend in 3D. To follow along, you should have some basic knowledge of how to use Blender as I won't be covering everything from scratch. This is more of a process breakdown. Now, let's get started. First, we'll get our character and animation from Mixelmo. It's free to use and has many different characters, poses, animations and allows you to create a basic rig for your own characters. I used a different character for my video, but for this tutorial I'll use one of these characters. Once you've selected a character that you like, we can go onto the Animations tab and select an animation for the character. I'll use the same animation that I had in my video, but you're free to choose a different one if you like. After downloading the animated character, we'll open a new project in Blender and import our model. I'm just going to delete everything by pressing A to select all objects and then X to delete them. Now, import the FBX file we downloaded from Mixamo. Select the armature and apply the rotation by pressing Ctrl A. With the armature selected, go into Pose Mode. Press A to select all bones and shift the keyframes ahead by 30 frames. Make sure you're on frame 1 and clear all transformations for all bones. I'll bring the armature in front so it's easier to edit it. I'll rotate the arm bones by 45 degrees while in front view to form an A pose. Press A to select all bones and then press I to add keyframes for all bones on frame 1. This helps in setting up the cloth later. Don't forget to save your project. Set the end frame to where the last keyframe is in the timeline. With the armature and the character selected, go to Export and select Alembic as the file format. Check the Selected Objects Only option. We will use this exported animation in Marvelous Designer. Marvelous Designer is a great tool to make 3D clothing. It's not a free software, but they offer a 30-day trial so you can check it out. I'm using an older version of Marvelous Designer, but this process will work in the latest version too. Import the Alembic file in Marvelous Designer. In the 2D window, I'll create a square garment by using the rectangle tool. Double left click to open up this menu and enter your dimensions. I'm making a square with edge length of 274 centimeters. You can change the dimensions to your liking. Select the cloth in 3D window and use the gizmo to rotate and move the cloth to place it a little higher than the character's head. We can start simulating the cloth by pressing this arrow in the top left. You can simulate using your GPU as well, but it's not accurate sometimes, so I'm just going to use the default simulation method which uses the CPU. While the simulation is active, you can click and drag the cloth to adjust it over the avatar. If the avatar is clipping through the cloth, try to adjust the cloth around that area. Another way to fix this is trying different skin offset values. Click anywhere on the avatar to select it, go to the scene tab and change the skin offset value and try to adjust the cloth again.
Lowering the particle distance in your cloth settings can also help with clipping issues and gives a more realistic simulation but requires more computing power. Don't reduce the particle distance too much if your device can't handle it. I reset the cloth arrangement in 3D view to simulate it again. The simulation slowed down a lot by setting the particle distance to 10. I'm going to change it back to 20 for the purpose of this tutorial. You can see how dense the geometry is in wireframe mode. Don't forget to save your project file. Now, we will use the Tack on Avatar tool to fix the cloth in place where the goggles would be. Left click to start the line tack and double left click to end it. Then do the same on the surface of the avatar. Make sure the direction in which you place the points is same for both the cloth and the avatar. Like I went left to right on the cloth, I'll do the same for the avatar. Same process for both sides of the avatar's head. This doesn't have to be very accurate, just place the line tack where the goggles would roughly be. I'm going to reset the cloth and simulate it again. Make sure the dotted lines from the tack lines don't cross each other or it won't simulate properly. I changed the particle distance back to 20 for this tutorial, but you can use a lower value like 15 or 10 if your PC can handle it. You can change the behavior of the cloth by changing the fabric preset. By default, the cloth has triangular faces. There is no problem with this, but I'm going to apply a subdivision surface modifier to the cloth when I import it to Blender which works better with quad faces. So I'm going to remesh the cloth. The remesh process can take some time depending on your PC and it might look like it's stuck but it is working. Now, we'll go to the Animate tab to animate the cloth with the avatar's animation. The avatar's animation might look like it's playing too fast, but this wouldn't be a problem. Just press the record button and the cloth will start simulating with the avatar's animation. This can take a lot of time depending upon your hardware and what particle distance settings you use. When the simulation is done, make sure the cloth is not clipping with the avatar anywhere. If it is, you might have to adjust your cloth and simulate again until you're satisfied with the result. After the simulation, export the cloth using the point cache to format.
Use these settings. Make sure the scale is in meters and set to 100%. The animation file can be big in size depending on what settings you use so make sure you have enough space when saving them. We'll go back to Blender after this is done. I'll create a new collection for the cloth to keep the project a bit organized. Then go to Import and select Wavefront OBJ Legacy. Navigate to where you exported the Point Cache 2 file, there will also be an OBJ file with the same name. And select the Keep Vertex Order option. Select the cloth object and add a mesh cache modifier. Select the PC2 option and navigate to where you save the Point Cache 2 file and select it. In the time remapping settings, set the frame start to 1 as our timeline starts at frame 1. The animation might lag a bit because of the dense geometry of the cloth, but it will be fine in the final render. I'll quickly make a pair of goggles. I changed my render engine to cycles and will set up some lighting in the scene using an HDRI. I'm using an HDRI of a forest which I downloaded from polyhaven.com. Next, I'll give a basic black material to the goggles and fix the material of the avatar. By default, the roughness value of the avatar's material is inverted when importing into Blender. To fix this, just add an invert node in between the image texture and the roughness input of the principal BSDF and turn the metallic slider to zero. I'm making a basic material for the cloth by using a magic texture. Now, we still have to animate the goggles with the character. To do this we will parent the goggles to the head bone of the armature. First, select the goggles then press shift and select the armature. Go to pose mode and select the head bone of the armature. Press ctrl P and select bone. If the goggles are clipping through the cloth, just adjust the position of the goggles so it doesn't go through the cloth. Once that's done, we will create the ground for the scene. For this, add a plane and scale it up. I subdivided the plane and used proportional editing to create some sort of terrain. Next, we'll add a material to the ground. I used a ground texture from Polyhaven.
I imported the texture in Blender by using Node Wrangler by pressing Ctrl Shift T, so make sure you have it enabled in your add on settings. Or you can import the image textures one by one. Change the scale of the ground texture so it fits well with the scene. To add some grass to the ground, I use this free add-on called G-Scatter by Growald. It also has some inbuilt presets. You can also adjust the quality settings for the grass models. For this scene, you can choose low quality as the grass won't be in focus after we add some depth of field to the scene. You can adjust the amount of the grass particles visible in your viewport and for the final render. Keep the viewport value low so it doesn't lag. The grass is going through the character and will also clip through the cloth. To fix this, we can create a weight mask and mark the area around the character so that there are no grass particles where our character is standing. Add a weight mask effect layer in G-Scatter, then select your ground plane and go to weight paint mode. A weight of value 0 is shown by blue and red for 1. By default, all vertices on the plane are assigned a value of 0. I'll assign a value of 1 to all the vertices and then mark the area where I don't want the grass with 0 weight. The instance object for the glass particles is added to the world origin so make sure to move it out of the scene. I'll add some different grass presets as well to fill up the ground and add variation. Our scene is basically done at this point. You can add more objects if you want to. Now, I'll add a camera object and position it for the final render. In the render settings, I changed the dimension to the dimension of an Instagram reel and positioned the camera accordingly. In the output settings, choose the folder where you want to save the rendered frames of your animation. Select the camera object and go to the camera settings and enable depth of field and select the cloth as the target. You can change the f-stop value to get a background blur effect of your liking. I used a value of 2. Then, I added some basic movement to the camera object so it moves a bit as the video goes on. You'll notice that there are some weird spots and folds on the cloth. 
To fix this, select the cloth object and go to its object data properties, go to the normals tab and turn off auto smooth. You can also add a subdivision surface modifier to the cloth to make the folds look better. This is where the quad geometry of the cloth helps as the subdivision modifier is added quickly. I used a subdivision of level 1 as it looked good enough. In the render settings, I increased the noise threshold value. This helps to speed up the render but it does compromise on the quality of the image. In the Compositing tab, you can add some post-processing effects to adjust the look of your render. Using this mix node, you can adjust how much noise you want in your image. Set the lens distortion value to 0.01 to get a subtle distortion effect. With the RGB curves node, you can adjust the contrast of the image. I use the color balance node to make the colors warmer and give a rustic look to the render. Just a little bit of editing made so much difference in the look and feel of the render. In my original video, I reduced the speed of the animation to half, which can be done using the time stretching settings. This is optional and you will have to render double the frames if you decide to do it. You'll have to change the start and end frame accordingly. We are almost done at this point. All that's left is to render out the frames of our animation and later compile them in a video.
After all the frames are rendered, open a new project for video editing. Change the dimensions of the project to match that of your rendered frames and import your image sequence. Adjust the end frame value according to your image sequence. Then, select your output folder and change the file format to FFmpeg video and change the encoding to MP4. In the video tab, Select the output quality as perceptually lossless. Now just render out your final animation. If I missed something out, feel free to leave a comment or reach out to me on Instagram.